After waiting what felt like forever, we've made so much renovation progress all in one week. Sheetrock on the walls, fireplace and front porch build out, and installed our exterior doors. Not only is this progress giving me life, but we're that much closer to calling this house a home. So the icy weather is completely gone now. It is beautiful. It's like 64 degrees and just wonderful. I've actually spent the last two days down here just getting things done. Weird little projects that are just super odd but need to be done all to get this house tried in, all to, you know, keep making progress and moving forward. I did this window. <laughs> this window was pretty specific in its issues. It had a bottom piece that was rotten, damaged, just wasn't up to par for me. I had to rebuild it here and then put the glass in, fix it a little bit, do some things. So it's done, it's trimmed, but it's not, the trim isn't painted. The next project that I did was here in the kitchen. So I wanted these box windows in the kitchen on each side of the stove. Um, so we built out the wall 10 inches, but for some reason, there wasn't any framing above the box window. So if they would have come to sheetrock, they, the wall would have come like, straight and then they would have dipped the sheetrock back all the way up to the ceiling and that's not what i wanted i actually wanted just the window part recessed into the wall kind of thing um, so i framed it out up there i just put a t you can see like the darker boards because i like to use salvaged wood <laughs> for my project over here i'm gonna take you turn you guys around i framed the fireplace this was a project i kept putting off because I just didn't know. It wasn't, I didn't have the mantle. It was gonna be kind of a, let's throw this measurement out there. But maybe this will work. I thought about framing it out later and sheetrocking it myself or just putting up a board so that we could like rock it. And then we found the mantle. <laughs> the the mantle i had the mantle i knew the measurements of that i could actually figure out what needed to be framed so we'll, we'll have some details that are added but essentially this is built out for that mantle and this is the opening here and this it sits the fire is going to sit up on this platform so it's raised off of the floor everything else is just support and the TV is gonna go above it. And then they'll come to build out the backside of the fireplace going outside of the house, which will be rock. And finally, project number four, which was a work in progress, which we're about to completely remove and redo. I installed these doors. I did a pretty good job, but I think I learned a lot in the process. And I may have made it too small, because they don't <laughs> Hey, sometimes you have to try something out. You just have to go with, it's also very hard to hang doors by yourself because you have to lift them off the floor a little bit. I needed to get my feet wet because I kept procrastinating the door project and installing the doors because I had never installed door jams. I needed to stop watching tutorial videos and just try it out, you know? So I did that and I, I shimmed in my jam and it's super sturdy but my doors don't fit and I think that there's too much tension in the hinges. I'm learning, that, that first attempt was a learning process. So never get discouraged if you try once and it doesn't work out. You can just do it again. I gotta take them all off now. You know how many times I've taken these doors on and off? Now that I've done this once, I feel a little more confident in my <laughs> skills to explain it. So I grab a sheet of paper and I just write down all of my measurements. This is how I start like every project that I do. So I started by measuring our doors. The doors together, since these are French doors, there's two of them. So I put them close together how they will shut. They measure 44 and a quarter wide by 83 and three quarters high. They were almost seven foot, but I had to shave it down just a little bit. We're gonna start with the height. So 83 and three quarters 
first and I'm gonna add an inch and a half. That's gonna be three quarters of an inch for our floor and three quarters of an inch for the threshold to go underneath and we can put some weather stripping there as well. So I need two pieces at 85 and a quarter and one piece at 46 inches. Okay, so something I learned from my first time around, don't assemble the jam until you've placed the hinge holes on the jam. I'm gonna grab one of my sides and I'm gonna lay it down next to the door. We are gonna find out exactly where these hinges need to go. So for hinges, you kind of want them to be inset into the door and the jam so that it's a super flush fit and there's no air that kind of gets in on the corner and it's just like more polished, more finished, like the details. I actually got this hinge router template and this I thought would work for both the door and the jam, but it doesn't because the door, it's just for skinny doors. The door has to go in there. Well, my jam is too big. Like I can't put this wood in there. Look at that. <laughs> I was like, well now what am I gonna do? So I ordered one that just kind of attaches to the top of the wood so that I could do a really professional job because last time I did a really bad hack job. It was my practice round. So this one I'm gonna have to do by hand. We're gonna lay this down. We're gonna put the hinges on top. We're gonna draw the hinges, like sketch them out onto our wood. And then we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver as like a chisel and also our router to create an eighth of an inch little cutout into the wood so the hinge can fit in and be super flush and super finished just enough so that the hinge lays inside there. Now we put it together. I just laid it all out together, put the top next to the side. I'm gonna use screws and a speed square to make sure that the, the points from the top and the side is meeting up perfectly square at a 90 degree angle and then screw it in. And then our jam is ready to go into the hole. Time to install it. You're also gonna notice that this jam is not as high as the opening. So a design decision throughout the house, put a transom window like the original house on top of every door. So all the transom windows will be different sizes, obviously, but it'll give an illusion that they're all the same or it was thought about. I hope, <laughs> That's my, that was my goal at least. So we're gonna line up the outside and we're gonna use shims like this. I bought like a bundle of shims. They're super inexpensive but they help to make sure that the door is like perfectly level, plumb, straight, if you will. They're kind of like triangular shapes. So they're skinnier on one side and they're thicker on the other so that you can figure out how much like wedge you need in between the jam and the frame of the door opening. Honestly, you guys, I don't think I need to shim this door at all because it's like literally the exact, I must have did that measurement really well. We did custom design all of these openings. Wow, you guys. I got this big level so that I could make sure. You can actually hide your screws behind the hinges. Ta-da! Yes. Now for the hard part, hanging the door by myself. Right at the top right there, it goes, the door goes straight up with the hinges and then kind of goes uh, and that's what's keeping it from like closing. I thought that I was doing something wrong. Okay, well that I can fix. I could just like sand it down there. Oh, 
It's a lot of work to have it like not work, right? at its core, and I won't do I get bored. There's too much to be explored. Things that we cannot ignore. Okay, wow. We have one more door to put in. A French door, the biggest French door. I saved the hardest for last, basically. So I got the jam in. I think I got that pretty much down in my head. That makes sense, you know? I've tried it a couple of different ways, making the holes inset for the hinges. The jam is disassembled before I put it together. I've done it up. I bought this new little contraption. I'll link it in case you find yourself in this situation as well. It has these little notches. You see those little, little notches right there? They basically go on the edge and I already marked where the hinge goes. Then we're gonna use our router to make that inset. Just like I've done before, but just keep using different tools to see what method works best. Oh, this one. This is my favorite method so far. Okay, so now that we have the jam for these French doors in the house, <laughs> We have to kind of do some things to them. These are original doors from the original house, but they were in two different spots. They're the exact same door, size, paneling, everything, but one of them has slats and one of them doesn't. We basically just need to cut out some panels to make a match. So I'm gonna drill a hole in the corner to get my jigsaw into the panel. was just kind of in between two pieces of trim. So I thought I was gonna have to use, oh, 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 that was so satisfying. Waking up today, I did not know that we were gonna have this many people and different tradesmen working on the house. We have sheetrock going up. We have some support in the living room going up. We have the fireplace going up and possibly the porch. So we're gonna enjoy them doing that today because I would just be in their way if I tried to work on any projects. I'm so excited. <laughs> Standing in my way But I must try to figure it out anyway Songs of worries travel with the storm But I must try to figure it out alone Yeah, I must try to figure it out alone
You guys, we're standing under a porch. We like actually have the porch back after so many months. Now it's not done. It's to the stage where we need our decking. So that's gonna go down first. So we have some temporary support. In the meantime, we're gonna DIY install the decking and then they're gonna come back and put in my posts, which are gonna be supportive and all the rest of like the detailed fascia and things. But holy cow, the front of the house looks so different now. It actually feels like it's back to its, you know, glory days. It's, it's back to its like original style and design and it's not just a vacant hole here anymore. Also a fireplace. This is something the house did not have originally. They had little chimneys. Well, probably one of the scariest things that we demoed in this house were all of the chimneys. They weren't in the house anymore. They weren't sticking up out of the roof. They were just in the ceiling. And it was a lot of weight. And we have the fireplace and the place that I wanted it. And it's gonna have this beautiful rock detail on the outside. We're already talking about it. It is also a work in progress. And the design that I want, it goes straight up five and a half feet and then kind of cuts into three and a half feet. So it has a little bit of a shape to it. So the bottom and the top are all framed in and we left some pieces open so that we can get the flue in. A very exciting update. We got sheetrock on the walls. So let's do a little tour because I think it was hard to envision, but now that you can't see through the walls, it's a little bit easier. So come on in. It looks so different. It just looks more finished. All the sheetrock in this room was on kind of the upper walls. So we had all of this beautiful original wainscoting that I wanted to keep and in its original spot and just continue it. And I used every ounce of wainscoting. I even had to salvage some other pieces just to try and mix and match. And um, I'm so proud that we were able to save and salvage so much from the house. So all of that's still in the bottom. So the sheetrock had to start about three foot off the ground and go up onto the walls and then also in the ceiling in this area. Um, and then I put salvaged beadboard on each side wall. That's from the bathroom demo. We've also used so much of the original beadboard in the house. Uh, so it's all sanded and ready to be painted and shelves to be put up there and things. Also the fireplace is built. That's very exciting. So the TV will be over the fireplace and the opening is the exact measurements to that beautiful mantle that we found. If we go this way, I love this view, you guys. My boxed windows. <laughs> I have been dreaming about this kind of look for so long. The inspiration, the original inspiration that I had for the house, it just reminded me of the house. It's Serena Go's kitchen, older kitchen, I guess. And I'd box it out and trim it out in this really rich tone so it matches the living room and it pulls that look into the kitchen. So right in the middle is gonna be our hood and range and stove. And then of course the island. This is all sheet rock here. There's gonna be cabinetry here. You go out to the back door here and come look at the pantry. Well, there's a ladder in the pantry, but that won't be there. But the pantry? <laughs> when we're gonna shove the microwave in here too. You know, we don't use it often, but you know, sometimes. So it's gonna be in here instead of me in the kitchen. And the little coffee bar. I still need to put some beadboard up in here. That's where you kind of see some of the insulation. Um, but I didn't want to be in their way. <laughs> and then you go out to the back door. Then the dining room. This, it feels so much brighter in here now that the walls are white instead of brown because the shiplap was all brown. So now it's just like brightened up the area so much. So again, it's all wings cutting all on the bottom. Unlike the living room, we may, and I know for a fact that we're gonna paint the wainscoting in here because it was already painted. And I think that that's the easier route and it would give a little bit of a different look in this space in the dining room. I've been looking for dining chairs for like nine months. And over my vlog, I shared with you guys, I went to an antique mall and found the most beautiful French provincial vintage velvet cushioned dining chairs. If you haven't seen them, go check out the vlog. I'll leave it linked. They're amazing. So imagine them in this area. You know, imagine me at the table, sitting in those chairs. <laughs> and then, I feel like the hallway and the bedrooms was the complicated part. It's like, what? What do you, what do you mean, McKenna? So this is the entrance to those areas. So the original 
transom opening that went out to their very rundown sleeping porch is now the entrance to the addition that we built, which are the bedrooms, the bathrooms, the laundry, very nice closets. So come on. Table, long table with art over it. And I did put a plug so that we could have an art light so it could shine. <laughs> I love this. This was a pretty detail I wanted to showcase here. And then we just have a closet here. So this is the coat closet. It's relatively almost exactly in the original spot that it was. We just moved it down just on the other side of this entryway. You can continue down the hallway. The hallway. So you go into the guest bedroom here, which is massive. Massive. I mean, it's a beautiful guest bedroom. And I feel like this is the darkest natural light room in the house because it looks over the patio and it's the bamboo wall, the side of the house, and it just doesn't get a lot of natural light. So <laughs> it will get plenty of light when we have electricity when you're in here, but it's a great size. We have a smaller scale closet in here, which is gonna be great for storage. And I kinda of wanna build out some more cabinetry storage for like DIY supplies and like my stuff here, um, because I feel like we have the space. So then you come outside to guest bedroom and continue down the hallway. And the, I did this on purpose where I made the hallway open up as much as I could. Small hallways make a house feel small. And so my mom and I were talking about it and we just wanted to make them as wide as possible. So you go from a four foot opening to a five foot opening here, a five foot hallway. And so you come this way and you go into the very, very pretty guest bathroom or what it's going to be, which will be the first makeover that you see as well. We'll be doing penny tile and custom cabinetry and a DIY thrift flip on an old phonograph cabinet. We have a pretty vintage quaffa tub and a pretty mirror and all the things in here. I'm very, very, very excited about this space. And we also kept the original beadboard ceiling in here. So um, we're gonna be refinishing that too. And you continue down the hallway. We have a pretty little linen closet here. And then the laundry room, which is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. It felt a lot bigger than it, I thought it was going to feel, which is great because you're going to be able to step into the laundry room and have a big counter and the laundry washer and dryer underneath and then storage and hanging and all the things. So it's really good. We have the electrical box in here too. So it was kind of a great little space. And then you're going to enter the primary suite. So imagine that there are doors here. Imagine that I opened the doors <laughs> to this area. Oh, you guys, I'm so in love with this space. So much sunlight. There's so many windows. These were all windows that I had to source and find that matched ours, double pane windows. They're also old and they needed a lot of work, but we did it. I'm still working progress on some of them, but they're, they're pretty much there. The beautiful doors that I got that are absolutely stunning that I'm very in love with going out to the patio. We have two great size closets in here, one over on the side. And then also, if you continue this way, you go into um, the primary bathroom. This is gonna be a fun makeover. This is just gonna be a fun space to design. It also has tons of windows and tons of light. I wanted this really pretty statement of windows, the old windows from the sunroom uh, over the closet top, which we already have. Uh, and then the faucet will come out of the wall and just, this will be a whole moment. We also have that vanity. This is where it's gonna go. Can you see the vanity here? With two pretty lights. We still need to find a really pretty mirror for here. And then the shower. Talk about a shower. It's huge. You know, there's a, there is a regret. I, I think I'll go through after this whole renovation and go through um, things I would have done differently because it's a learning process and every home is gonna be different, but I wanted this house to feel very large. And on the plans, I wanted the bathrooms and the closet to be only 10 foot tall. Then when we started to lower the, the ceilings to 10 foot, I was like, let's just keep it big. I want all, everything really tall. I didn't take into consideration the shower. And I wish I would have dropped the ceiling for two reasons. It would have kept the bathroom or at least the shower warmer. 
So if I would have dropped it, it would have been less to heat up when you're in the shower. It also would have kind of saved me money on tile because <laughs> I wanted the tile to go all the way to the ceiling. You live and you learn, but that's a, that's a little, I wish I would have done that differently. It's still gonna be absolutely beautiful. We're gonna do Picket Marble in there, Picket Shaped Marble in here, it's gonna be really pretty. And this is a little toilet area, just where the toilet will be, behind a little wall, so you just have lots of privacy, but you can still, you know, look at a tree if you want to. And then, here's the other, here's a little living closet with a pretty door. And then you go into another big size closet, which is my closet or other, another room. We actually soundproofed this room too. <laughs> we put insulation all the way around this space um, and it has this pretty little old window. This is the only window in the house that doesn't open. Um, and it's very pretty. It's just a little skinny window. I just knew it was going to be perfect for a closet. Oh, you guys, major update. The updates that I've been waiting for for so long. And I know you guys have been waiting too because I just like, I wanted the next video to be to the next phase of this. And now that we have sheetrock hung, they're gonna tape and float it. So they said that the whole process from hanging to floating to finishing all of that stuff is going to take 10 days. So by the end of next week, at, mo at most, they are gonna be completely done with sheetrock and then it's just a matter of the electrician coming back to do his thing and the plumber coming back to do his thing and then to put the AC units in and that's, the, they're done. We're, it's all on us at that point, which makes me so happy. I just really want to get to decorating. So we're going to be doing the flooring. We're going to be doing makeovers. We're going to go room by room, and really design it and actually move in and do all the things. So projects that I'm going to be working on, some really fun, small projects kind of throughout the house. So I feel like there's gonna be one more like all around house update and then we're gonna be starting to design. And I'm very, very excited. So if you guys are not subscribed, subscribe, hit the bell notification, make sure that you're subscribed to my vlog channel too for even more behind the scenes, things that we're shopping for. Two additional videos over on my vlog channel every week as well. So you get to see it all. I share all this whole process with you guys. Comment down below which room you're most excited for. I know you. I know it's gonna be the kitchen because <laughs> that's one that I'm really excited for, but they're all really good. All the spaces are gonna be really, really good. And I, I just hope that I do this house justice and my vision really comes to life. So I will see you guys again on the vlog channel this week and again on Sunday for another renovation video. Bye guys. I wonder if you could do it the other way and it's square. We're testing. We're testing. Maybe we can flip it. I must try to figure it out alone. Yeah, I must try. Oh. It does. It Wait, it does, it does, it does. That's brilliant.